This Monday night football props and NFL week two recap edition of the sports gambling podcast brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the app now and use code SGP. New customers can score $200 in bonus bets instantly when they bet just $5 on football. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code SGP. We're also brought to you by Game Time. Snag the tickets without the stress. Use promo code SGPN on your first purchase to save twenty dollars. Download the Game Time app and use promo code SGPN. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play the Underdog Pick'em in college or NFL and win up to twenty x in one game. Use promo code SGPN to Underdog Fantasy for a one hundred percent deposit bonus up to one hundred dollars. Finally, we're brought to you by Hall of Fame Beds, the sports betting research platform. For parlays, player props, and game lines, download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com. Use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month and start making smarter bets today. No sound. Ryan. Ooh, welcome everyone to the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean Stacking the Money Green with my partner on picks, Ryan. Real money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Well, I I guess we gotta fire Josh. Not here. The sound didn't go through. Tech teams fired. <laughs> Apologies Ryan, Ryan's the, always looking uh, to throw someone under the bus. Uh, that was on me. Week one, it was uh, that, that poor mean? offensive lineman. Week two, you tried to throw him again. The audience was chomping at the bit. They were dying to see you react to another Giants loss. Fortunately for you, Ryan, Giants pulled out the victory. Never in doubt. Never a doubt. <laughs> I will say, when Mark Lewinsky had to jog back on the field. And they uh, even in the broadcast they had to address the fact that this man had just been benched, mm. and then he made that amazing play where he turned around and pushed the <laughs> lineman right into Saquon Barkley. Oh, it was pretty. It was pretty epic. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, it, never a doubt. And I think the takeaway is, guess what? They played some different linemen, and they didn't all suck. Mm. So why the fuck Mark Lewinsky was out there in the first <laughs> place? I have serious problems now. I do want to address something. Sure. There has been a lot of slander thrown at Mr. Brian Dable. Yeah. Pretty shitty coach. Reigning coach of the year. (laughs) Now, what did we see at the end of the game? He told his players, knock it down, knock it down. And then we saw later on in the day, not much later, Ron Rivera failed to do the same thing with his Washington commanders team. Well, Eric B. is the head coach if you're judging by shots on the sideline. Well, I mean, come on. It's uh, it's a media situation. I mean, uh, at the end of the day, it's basically WWE what we're dealing with here. Mm. Uh, are you watching these games? <laughs> what my big take? So I've been trying to take a, a little bit more uh, notes during the situation. Really? Uh, just so I don't. Yeah, sometimes you, in the heat of the moment, you forget what's going on. Some of the shit that's happening at the end. I thought we were getting smarter as a football coaching community. Oh, there were a number. What of, are we doing? Well, a number of just horrible decisions, and then just un- for no context applied. Maybe doing the right thing, but not having the right context. Punt, so it kind of makes it the wrong thing. <laughs> Punting on the opponent's side of the ball and like fourth and one, fourth and two. Yeah, d- deciding to randomly go for two, not go for two in other situations. It's it. It amazes me how Cut shitty the game some of these to coaches. a one-score game when there's no clock time on the clock in the game. In full, inve- I mean, we need a full investigation, Sean. There, I would say at minimum, but a lot of people must subscribe to the Mike Vrabel football guy coaching card newsletter because, again, questionable things are happening, and uh, it affects the number. Also, can I say something else? Sure, I'll refs are terrorists. <laughs> If I could, uh, Sean, you've watched every, basically every game with me. Yes. Can I get on the right side of a fucking review? <laughs> I, is it not unreal? It's you're, like seeing fifteen blacks at the rule uh, at the roulette table. Well, Ryan, your your review luck, it's your due. Uh, ultimate sign of regression to me. The, that the wash. I mean, just, just uh, hit after hit of just bad. The, the craziest uh, no call to me was 
that that two point conversion in the Broncos game was they were all over uh, Cortland Sutton, uh, grabbing him, holding him down. I don't know how you could not call that. The refs must personally hate Sean Payton. Now they were very fortunate to get that uh, hail mary. They were just horrifically. The Broncos blew that game, cost me my lock. I did go one and one, hit the money line dog, but uh, that was that was just an all time collapse by the Broncos. And then they hit the the hail mary. I was trying to remember another time where someone hit the hail mary at the end of the game and then still lost the game. I I don't know how that's possible. Yeah, probably uh, the guy who was praying as Denzel Washington put a bomb up his ass. That he he hit the hail mary and then didn't hit the hail mary. What what movie what? are you referencing? Oh, Man on Fire. Of oh, course, okay. come on, Sean. I, don't, I, I should not to, see that. I should what, what? Don't don't say that to the public. <laughs> All right. Sure you have. Okay. If you haven't, please go check it out. But this guy, he think you know he wakes up, he's alive, but then he realizes there's a bomb in his ass, <laughs> so he's not actually alive. Uh, a little bit like that uh, Denver Broncos team. And my note for that game, I, I don't want to jump ahead, but I mean, Jesus, Ru- Russ, you know what Russ did? He put the heat too high <laughs> on the pan and he burned that motherfucker. He's, how can they let Fuck, this man dude. back in the kitchen take away his culinary Th- life? These are my nice pans. What are you doing? You never cooked before, motherfucker. Oh man, what a what an amazing NFL week two. We still got two games left. Two awesome Monday night matchups. If you haven't got down over a DraftKings Sportsbook, what are you waiting for? I'm sitting looking at a. And we're gonna give out our parlay at the end of the show, but I'm looking at one I cooked up on DraftKings, 190 to one, and you only need three things to happen. In my mind, three very realistic uh, things. Use a promo code SGP. Bet five dollars, get two hundred dollars instantly. Use those bonus bets. Oh, DraftKings, you can't beat it. Incredible menu. I, I don't need to ex- explain to you that football's more fun when you're in on the action. Of course, you're in on the action. That's why you listen to the Sports Gambling Podcast. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use the promo code SGP. Five dollars gets you two hundred dollars instantly in bonus bets only on the DraftKings Sportsbook. Official sports betting partner of the National Football League. Promo code SGP. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. And state-specific responsible gambling resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Tennessee Titans get the win, get the uh, cover. They were three-point home dogs. Never in doubt. Tennessee Titans. It was, we, we were watching with our buddy Decker. They were my money line dog. It was, we should have had him in the contest, Ryan. I regret that. But we're just watching it with Decker. You just saw this coming a mile away that the and and Tannehill obviously played better in my mind, but certainly not great. This was just an all time classic Chargers loss. Herbert threw for over 300 yards and two touchdowns, zero interceptions. The defense sacked Ryan Tannehill five times. Derrick Henry didn't break 100 yards, and the Chargers still lost. I, I, I mentioned it earlier, but Brandon Staley punting on fourth and one on the Tennessee 44. This was a guy who was like going for it every single time to the point that people thought he was crazy. I, this is just the Los Angeles chargers. It, they chargered the, the it's, it's just crazy. Uh, not much to add. I think, I mean, again, this was the, what, what, what I said to Decker, who, by the way, was extreme. It was, it was sad. It was sad. He was doing like that kind of like, oh, I guess we're gonna fire the coach now. And it's like, oh no, he's already jinxing the Brandon Staley ha- firing, so they'll charge her <laughs> that. And what I said to him was, you just got peak brabled. Yes, that's what this was. That how how the game was c- so close at the half, and then you, you know once again, Brandon Staley is a v- Vic Fangio disciple. The core principle of the defense is essentially keep it all in front of you. Make him beat you with repetition. What is this charger? I highlighted this on the show <laughs> last week. They led the league going into last week with 20 explosive plays. I don't think they're going to be giving up their number one spot. And so to give up the explosive plays to a Tennessee team that looked pretty, I mean, at times we were we were wondering if you're Tana, you even went public with your I did no, no longer being a, a cla- it was a great reverse nice. uh, reverse jinx. 
I, I said I was turning in my mana stand. I was no longer living on a Tannehill Island or yeah, Jared took it back. Yeah. But uh, that was just the, that was just chargers charging uh, to such an, an extreme level. It was, it was just hard. I, I was really trying not to laugh because Decker was here. I had a, a large piece of change on it that I'm going to be cashing over at the circus sports book when we're nice. there at nine o'clock Pacific Friday uh, well, night for Vison. We'll have to get there a little early. Oh yeah. I, <laughs> I was was like imagining hitting our crazy parlay and having them hand count 25 grand photo with Derek. One of those are, are, are going to hit moving over to the Packers. They lost 24, 25, although got the cover. If you bet them late, that C-L-V. number, that number C-L-V. changed. C-L-V. We picked it at minus two. I had the wrong side, but if you bet it later on in the week, I think they ended up closing a three point dog. So this definitely depended on where you got the number and when you bet it. This was how did anyone lose? What are you all <laughs> stupid idiots? How did you if you got them? I, I thought I thought both teams looked pretty bad, if I'm being honest. I had Jordan Love clearly struggled throwing the ball. Desmond Ritter, I I still out on Desmond Ritter. Nothing I saw convinced me that Desmond Ritter was good. And Arthur Smith, yes, they won the game, but there was a ton of questionable coaching decisions. Uh, throughout that game, so I, I think the Falcons fortunate to get the win, but also the Packers didn't look that great. Like I, I don't think either team deserved to win this game. I disagree. Okay. I think you're being a little bit, uh, and I, I was. You thought the Falcons looked good. I meant to bring this up in the intro. No, see, here's your, you're doing that thing where it's 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 an either I thought, or. I thought both well, teams no. looked bad. Well, and my takeaway was from a score output the. One team dominated the snaps, the Falcons. The Packers defense was on the field for, I think, over 75 snaps. Uh, and then you look at the offensive production for the Packers. It was all on three drives, three long drives, yep. not real, not much success outside of that. And two of those drives were aided by long PI calls. And so I, I guess what I would say is that Atlanta kind of did Atlanta's thing. They dominated the clock. Their, their poor coaching decisions. Uh, a lot of short yardage stuff where they were running shotgun, not handing the ball to Tyler Algier or Bijan Robinson. Yeah, that probably cost them. I don't know. I, I'm not EPA here, but I'm going to say it cost them five to six points. So to me, them winning and covering the early number, and not covering the late number, was more of a product of j- just the idea that the the score in this case, Packers maximized their opportunities. Falcons minimize their opportunities. And so to me, what that tells me is we're going to get maybe value on the Falcons next week because of what you just said, basically, neither team looked like they deserved to win the game. What I'm saying is that the Packers were very fortunate to cover this game and even be in it okay. based on that. Yeah, analysis. I, I, I agree, but I because still they, don't, I, I still don't think the Falcons are a good team. Like when they sure. play good teams, I think they're going to struggle. Sure. Okay. They dominated. The, I mean, again, if they, if they dominate this, if they dominate the plays, if they're if they're running eighty plays a game on offense, they're yeah. gonna win a lot of games. Okay, and, and sure, I don't, some I don't might think they look, will against other teams. Some might some might look close like this, but again, I, I I think the Falcons' defense had more success than you're giving them credit for. That's all. Okay. Again, it was really it was really concentrated to three or four drives <laughs> the entire game. Ryan was saying we a ton, and you can even hear it in his defense. He's all in on the Atlanta Falcons because I think the fact that they run the ball and they look ugly. And in this case, yes, I was screaming but at they, Arthur. But Smith. they weren't running the ball. They were they were well, throwing out of the shotgun, and Ritter was throwing they, all over the and place. And they got back to it. Bijan looked electric. <laughs> and, you have and, to admit and that. And they they had some horrible play calls that Bijan bailed them out. Bijan looked good. The yeah. team did not. Uh, Indianapolis Colts thirty-one, Houston Texans twenty. Anthony Richardson two rushing touchdowns. I'm already imagining. What kind of sweet boat I'm gonna buy when I win the Millie Maker? He gets knocked out with a concussion. <laughs> this was this was really not a game. They jumped out to a 14 nothing lead. It wasn't even as close as this 11 points would would suggest. The Texans defense, I think, really really shit the bed. Very banged up. Yeah, yeah, they were banged up. Offensive line very banged. O line very banged up. C J Stroud. Uh, Had some moments. Much. I mean, th- I mean, from a fantasy perspective, he, he put up a ton of numbers, but it felt like. It felt like basically Colts got out to a big lead, got a couple more scores once Richardson got knocked out, and then just kind of took their foot off the gas. Yeah, takeaway here: one, Anthony Richardson uh, still has yet to finish a game that he started. He's zero and two on finishing. Uh, I wonder what, what his. We'll have to know when to come. I wonder how long he is out for the concussion. 
Yeah, I I test. I would have put him back in. Uh, that's probably why I'm not a doctor. All right. <laughs> Come uh, on. Second, secondly, is uh, is Minshew an upgrade? No, no. I I liked what I saw out of Anthony Richardson so far. Those two rushing touchdowns he had. He's a he's a handful out there. Is this going to be one of those situations like last week with Zach Wilson and last year with Gardner Minshew, where comes in looks good? In relief, and then like massive drop off in production. I, I don't. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think. I don't think Gardner Minshew looked particularly good. I think he he was okay. I I think it was more about the Texans defense missing both their safeties, and being able to play with a with a big lead. I he Gardner Minshew didn't look amazing. He looked really bad at home uh, when he started against the Saints last year for the Eagles. When he started. Yes. I'm just saying, like coming in, he was 19 of 23, Sean, for 171 and a touchdown. That's pretty good. Yeah, I, I, I didn't. I thought he was fine. Okay. I would. I shouldn't. I shouldn't criticize him. To me, it was just. I guess in my head, it was kind of the game was already over, and yeah, they took care of business. Well, by the way, CJ Stroud, 384 and two touchdowns, and, I mean, and they looked. They did not look good. In, in fairness, even though there was some garbage time here. Justin Fields ain't throwing for 384. Oh, we'll get to him. We'll get to him <laughs> coming up. Seattle Seahawks 37, Detroit Lions 31. Seattle gets the Dog. outright win. Of course, close your eyes special oh. moves to 1 and 0. Oh. Ding 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 ding. Lock for a reason, people. Oh, whoa, 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 Sean. What? Oh, you made it a lot. I thought you were yes. you were associating the lock and the close your eyes special. We must keep those things separate. I I I thought it, this was a Detroit really blew that game. I mean, Seattle missed a couple kicks. It I, I don't know if it should have been that close. Golf had some very golfian uh turnovers. A- and hats off to Gino. I I I'm really still questioning this Lions defense if they can let Seattle come in with missing both their starting tackles and put up 37 points. Kenneth Walker had a big game. I know we liked him. Props DFS. Yeah, I mean, I think you and you didn't even mention Gino getting screwed with a horrible pass interfere or a, a intentional grounding call. He did. Uh, which Easy is in the chat. He's a big Lions fan. It did look like Aiden Hutchinson got held on that on that uh, on that uh, touchdown in overtime to win the game. All right, but uh, come on, you're gonna you're gonna miss a couple that, calls. That wasn't how you lost the game. Uh, you know, and here's what's crazy. The about momentum the, had shifted. I, I think even if they call holding there, Seattle figures out a way to get this win. What's crazy about this game is I gave out a golf double stack with Kenneth Walker on the brink, oh. and it didn't get home. Dog. So a lot of scoring. Well, it was week. it was interesting too because I had Amon Ra in DFS and yeah. he had a good game, but not not probably not even that good for his price. It was Reynolds, Khalif Raymond, some of these other ancillary guys that really Cheap, really. Fine. Really balled out and and kind of dominated. So this was a this is a nice win for Seattle. Uh, and, and I think I, I certainly think that like th- th- this was a masterful game plan. Or Detroit's defense is very trash, very <laughs> trash. I, come on, thirty. Do you, uh, we have a clip from this game too? Sean. Oh yes. I, I don't know if you want to. This was a this is a pretty fun uh, interaction between Geno Smith yelling at the ref and the ref uh, chiming in. YouTube.com slash sports gambling podcast if you want to see the video. It's a 10 yard penalty. I'm talking to America here. Excuse me. <laughs> well, and so first great. of all, Gino. The ref's like, hey, 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 I'm talking to America. They are irate because Gino just, Gino basically went, thought his receiver was going to run some sort of go route. Yeah, and it was he just broke a it classic off. miscommunication. And, and he ha- he was facing no pressure and he threw the ball where he thought the guy was going to go and they they called intentional and, and, ground. And this, it's a 10 yard penalty. <laughs> talking to America, and, and, he go, and he goes, "That's terrible." <laughs> All right, let's get out of this. Tampa Bay Bucks. Oh, I'm talking to America here. <laughs> All right, what's going done. on with the tech team, Ryan? We're at, it's smoking my weed. We're out. We're out of the matrix. Okay. We're out of the matrix. I'm talking to America right now. Might have to become a drop. Tampa Bay Bucks 27, Chicago Bears 17. I'll just read you some text messages from a Bears friend. Quote, of all the shitty Bears quarterbacks I've seen, I don't think I've seen anyone with less field awareness. What? That play Is that a pun? What do you mean? 
field away. Oh. <laughs> that play where DJ Moore is by himself in the flat and he sprints straight into a lineman. That looked like a child playing Madden, just pressing the buttons. The Bears defense has allowed and, and, and I mean Justin Fields just looked horrible. He's he's barely even getting that <sighs> the the garbage rushing yards that you used to be able to rely on. Baker looked I I'm not gonna say awesome, but definitely competent. Mike Evans, who I was tossing out anytime touchdown stuff, I was put him in my DFS lineup. He had himself a game six for one seventy one and a touchdown. The way the game ended, if you missed it, it was just the and they were they kind of still hung around in the game. It was at the time it was twenty to seventeen. Bears are backed up on their own like three or four yard line. They run a screen play. Justin Fields drops back and just dumps it. Right into Shaq Barrett's hands, and he returns it for like one yard for a touchdown. It, I, I think the Bears right now are the worst team in the NFL. There was a play where DJ Moore was wide open, just clapping uh, very hard, like "Get me the ball." <laughs> and all I could think about were the Bears fans and the the fantasy nerds who, oh, now you'll see, Justin Fields finally has weapons. <laughs> Yes, now that they got him, DJ Moore, he's gonna be great at passing. You know what Justin Fields is? Have you ever seen the movie Jurassic Park? I gotta ask this first now. Sure. Before. All right. Remember Newman's character? I do. He's kind of he's carrying those really important things, and he's driving <laughs> a fucking jeep through a, a hurricane on a on a jungle island. That's Justin Fields. Every time he touches the ball, he's everything that's wrong with just with. Uh, with he just doesn't see anything. It's it's crazy. He's everything wrong with Josh Allen with nothing right. <laughs> All the bad aspects of Josh Allen without the good aspects. He might need to join the running back conference call, Sean. Five, <laughs> five career wins. We're still sitting on it. I, that's what I, I I I couldn't take him. I I was still shocked that you were on the Bears. Uh, yeah, my bad. That was a bad. Not take. to rub salt well, in the wounds, but I I I thought as a Bears auto fader, you <sighs> would you would. I was dumb. The, it was just stupid. It, the two and a half. I, you know what? I got in it's that, it's that two spread. and a half, fucking two and a half math. You always take the two and a half. Yeah. Will Zach Wilson? Ever double up Justin Fields in career wins? Oh, right now it's might, nine to five. We might <laughs> see that. We might see that. Hey, game time! Have you guys signed up with Game Time yet? Well, if you haven't, what are you waiting for? I, I got the Eagles Rams coming up in a couple of weeks here. I still haven't bought my tickets. I'm not worried about it because Game Time will guarantee me the lowest tickets. If not, uh, they'll credit you one hundred ten percent of the difference. If you can find tickets in the same row or the same se- in the same section for less. You can't. Don't even try. You can get images of your seats. No obstructed views there. The uh, the guy who does the college football campus tours has been cracking me up. Like he tweets out obstructed view uh, college football seats. Uh, you won't get those because you can see the seats before you buy them. Best part is if you use our promo code SGPN, you get twenty dollars off your first purchase. Fire up the Game Time app and and check out their flash sales. They have some really good deals there. Uh, Redeem and uh, use the promo code SGPN for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Kramer, the phone lines are open, aka the X line. So if you do want to want to call in, you got something to bitch about. You want you got something you want to tout. You want to toss someone in the locker. Feel free. Maybe you just want to say hi. Yeah, check in. Say what's up. Yeah, Bills thirty eight, Raiders ten. We were all in the Bills there. Not a lot to. Take away from this game? Do you have you have any yes. big picture the thoughts? Bills can't run the ball. We're, That's true. We're at the same problem. Also, if we do. We're James at James Cook doesn't doesn't seem like the answer. No, Damian Harris is still interesting. In any time touchdowns, big yeah. time. He's a big guy. He's going to score some touchdowns and, and probably have a good price doing it. I, I think. I think it, we're at that point in the season. We've played two games, Sean. So also we have to naturally start playing uh, transitive property football. And. If the Raiders got their ass kicked by the Bills and the Raiders were able to beat the Broncos, row, is the <laughs> is the is the Commanders win even that impressive? <laughs> oh man, see what we're doing here. Also, like, very smart of us to take the Bills and Survivor. Yes, I, we kind of. Although no big ticket teams uh, ate the bullet this week, well, a, a bunch of like smaller. Well, Denver was the third, and okay. Seattle was fifth or sixth. So no, I. But it was pretty. It was pretty heavy up top with Buffalo. But yeah, I mean, we still we're, we're gonna Giants, end up dropping. Giants uh, losing would have been awesome for the survivor. Could have been a nice, uh, nice positive spin, right? 
but yeah, so we we lost, uh, we dropped another twenty uh, ish percent of the survivor pool, Sean. Clo- Let's go closer to our million. <laughs> uh, Chiefs seventeen, Jags nineteen. I was on the Jags. Uh, you were on the Chiefs. I kept going back and forth on this one. I I ended up thinking this was going to be a field goal game, but Jags. I, this was a pretty ugly game. I for two high powered offense. I'm sure. If you looked at the betting splits, everyone was on the over, thinking, "Okay, you get Kelsey back, they'll be in sync." I, I just didn't see a lot of great plays either way. Uh, personally, yeah, I mean, what did you make of that game? I feel like we, I didn't, I wasn't even watching it a ton because it didn't seem like a lot was happening. Uh, I would. So one, we do we we have to at least start addressing the Eric enemy talk, and I. I I'll be honest. I haven't heard a ton of mainstream discussion okay. about the idea that are are we giving no credit to the idea that Eric Bieniemy was the offensive coordinator and the offense has come in, come in. <laughs> last year they didn't miss a beat when they lost Tyree Kill. This year without Kelsey they looked absolute trash, and even with Kelsey, you know it, it kind of makes you wonder: can they really be an offense that is dominant with a bunch of dude like a bunch of dudes that don't excite you, right? Sky Moore, yeah. okay. They're they're working in this Watson kid a lot. Like that's that can't be great. And again, Kelsey maybe he's still working his way back, but yeah, we'll see. Give me give me t- give me October for th- the Chiefs before I start big picture before I start touting Eric B. Enemy. I I think they are getting adjusted. The Chiefs kind of to me remind me of some of the Patriots teams back in the day where Doesn't they're a matter. veteran team. They're kind of using September to figure yeah. things out. Uh, and fantasy wise, Christian Kirk, eleven catches, hundred ten yards. He was the guy that everyone left for dead after week one and then he he balls out in this game. And uh the other note is keep playing Mahomes over. Until they figure out their offense, keep playing the over for rushing over attempts. For rushing attempts. Yeah, because he's it was four, he, he went seven and, and, and runs. A uh, Baltimore twenty-seven, Bengals twenty-four. This, uh, yeah, Joe Burrow retweaked his calf, so he is considered day-to-day, which explains probably some of. Did uh, you hear, where'd you hear I, that report? When did you hear it? When at, did you read after it? the game. Yeah, well, interesting. Felt like that was being reported in our offices. Yes, Ryan during was, the fucking Ryan, game. Ryan was reporting it during the game. I, it, the, according to them, he redid it. Now, who knows? If he actually did, or if it was just the old injury, he didn't quite look the same. This guy fucking sucks. Bengals got a uh, punt return for a touchdown. Everyone who said, "Oh, hey, Bengals go into every you know, past couple of years, no big deal." They also go three and three versus the division. Yeah, so they, they, like, they just got off to a slow start. This is a good win for the Ravens, although great win. Maybe I'm a bit of a hater. They they kind of let the Bengals hang around. But this game was always going to be close. Yeah, I think if I'm if I'm a Ravens fan, what I'm telling myself is, oh wow, like like Lamar is actually distributing the ball around. Nelson Aguilar received six targets. (laughs) Nelson Aguilar tracked a ball. Maybe don't pay Odell Beckham (laughs) and just get Nelson Aguilar. Zay Flowers was not involved in the game, and they basically force fed him an entire drive where they even tried to get him a touchdown. Mark Andrews, like kind of like Kelsey, didn't look back, but him being out there just makes the offense go. But my takeaway is that there were a bunch of guys receiving targets. There were a bunch of guys receiving carries. I thought that Baltimore probably maybe Todd Munkin needs to learn about not taking your foot off the gas and you know, just keep, I I felt like they got conservative a couple of times. And also for for as much as the story is going to be about burrow being ass. Lamar is not like Lamar and Josh Allen are having very similar starts to their season where a little bit more was discussed because Josh lost the game, but they are making a shitload of mistakes. Yeah. Lamar, I guess that's what I was reacting to of Lamar didn't really look sharp, but he's still very well, the, yeah. electric with his legs and, and gets those first downs. And he is so frustrating to bet against where you think you have him hemmed in. And then he breaks off a 15 yard run. And you're like, what, what the fuck? How do you not see that coming? And his number, like he, he didn't exactly go bonkers. It was just kind of like, th- I guess this is what Bengals Ravens lo- games look like. again in the playoffs last year, they were about to win with Tyler Huntley and he just threw the ball up in the air. And that was the rest <laughs> was history, 14 points throwing, but yeah, D bet is pointing out. Let's call it what it is. All these new contract quarterbacks are point shaving. Even really, his, even his boy hurts. So if you look at the Eagles, well, the Eagles are one Oh and one, but Herbert Owen two ATS. 
Uh, Joe Burrow, zero and two ATS. Not a not a great Dan start. Dan Jones, zero and two ATS. I like I like this trend. <laughs> oh, I forgot he is new money. Arizona Cardinals twenty eight, New York Giants thirty one. I had the Cardinals, Ryan. You had the Giants laying five and a half. Must have been pretty nervous early on there, huh? I mean, they looked like absolute shit. They were getting bullied by a crap team. I don't know what happened in that game. I mean, you watched it. something clearly switched. Yeah, I don't I, know if it was effort. I, think, I don't. Know. I think it was just the the Cardinals turtling up. I do think the Giants but, were the more talented team. But Sean, at, the second that Hyatt caught that deep ball in the yeah. second half, like something changed with the offense. Drastically changed with the offense. Oh, well, I think also there's like a confidence, mental thing going on with the Cardinals. I, I, the fact that the the crowd there was clearly there to support their Giants. <laughs> CJ and I were joking that it was oh, getting, you all were these, getting all these getting all these you know New Jersey Italians uh, to come out in the desert. It, maybe it's entrapment. Maybe there's a Rico thing going on where they're like. Hey, Just all you, offensive. all you witness protection. There is probably, if you had the over under for most people, also in the witness protection uh, program at an NFL game, it must have been shattered there at that Arizona game. You got to be nervous, right? Because you got, you almost blew it to the Cardinals. Uh, I would say I was ready to. I was close to getting you a Caleb Williams jersey. Uh, I would. Well, it, it, for a, a, first of all, it would be a Tyler Algier Algier jersey. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not gonna look in the rear view. Okay. I don't know what happened. Much like in week two or week three, two thousand seven, <laughs> Giants were about to go down 0-3 after getting if you remember they were they gave up like eighty plus points in the first two weeks last year. They were 0 and two. They were playing the Redskins. Uh, that's what they were called back then. And there was a goal line. What year is this? Th- this is two thousand seven. Okay. But we're not doing rear view stuff. No, no, no. I'm just I'm explaining okay. the memory I had. Uh, not related to looking backwards in this season, and uh, and yeah, there was this big moment, and, and something changed drastically in that moment. For, for right now, instead of it being a, at the end of the third game, it was sometime in the third quarter against the Cardinals. And for some reason, without Andrew Thomas, which by the way, they have not operated an offense, a productive offense, without Andrew Thomas uh, since with ever, never. So the idea that this happened without Andrew Thomas out there. Albeit against a fucking horrible team who's not trying to win football games, but tell, something. Tell that to those fifty-three guys in the so, locker room. But something happened. Two and zero ATS. Something magical happened out there in the desert, in front of all those <laughs> witness p- protection guineas and dagos, as you said so offensively earlier. I didn't drop the Who D knows? bomb. You that did. was you. You did. No, I, that's I did what that. I heard. I mean, maybe you didn't say it, but that's what you're, you were thinking. You're pulling. Heard, you're pulling a Hassan I, Minaj here, Ryan. Oh wow, that's okay. a joke for like five people who would, yeah, who would may, follow that or, story. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I, you know, it, it, again, I the 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 I really do think you cost yourself the Denver bet today with all of your shit talking halfway through the. The Giants game, and I've been what telling you this privately. Shit talk? I've been saying this privately, <laughs> but you've been accruing a lot of negative karmic How? energy. Right, I, you guys were getting. But what am I supposed to do? Just sit there and pretend like you're not getting your ass kicked no, by the Cardinals? You, you got to be worried though hey, about that 49ers I, defensive line. Looking through the oh, windshield, very much seeing so. Joey Bosa coming it, through the or Nick, Nick Bosa. Bosa. I very much so. Yeah, very much so. All right, do you want to take a caller? We got, we got, uh, we got three. Uh, I think I want to say Easy was here first. You want to talk to yeah, Easy? Yeah, talk to Easy. Put Easy on the line. Easy. There is a delay on the uh, X, Ryan. So. Yo. Hey, hey, what's happening, oh, shit. man? Shit, tough day. What's up, guys? <laughs> what's up, man? Hey, I'm just here to talk shit on the overtime rules. Okay. Oh, interesting. Walk us through it. So. The NFL is the only league in what in sports where only one team gets a chance to score potentially. That's wow. ridiculous. <laughs> well, and, they did <clears throat> they did change it for overtime. Also, it is really playoffs. funny. Yeah, for the playoffs, the, it is funny that they adjusted the rules essentially for the Bills, and the Bills are still zero and five in overtime in the Josh Allen era. I would say easy. You guys got to if you want to win that game, you got to stop Seattle. In overtime at home, come on. Well, I mean, I agree with that, but the overtime rules, I'm just, I'm still pissed off about that. Hey, I'm but not, I'm not gonna argue against more football. So I'm gonna make a vow to not complain about. I tell my kids this. I don't want to <laughs> hear you tell me how bad the refs were. I'm not. I'm gonna make no more complaints 
other than the replay shit, which is I'm on I'm the opposite of a heater. I'm no <laughs> longer. I'm good with all the rules. Commission Commish Goodell, aka Roger Goddell, our commissioner. He's got everything right. Why are we complaining? Easy. How was your How was your betting day? Did you uh, How'd you do there? Or is there someone you want to throw in the locker? No, my betting day was actually all right. I, I hit a sixty-four to one uh, <laughs> touchdown parlay. <laughs> Oh my god! A little emotion. Yeah, come on. Did yeah. you get? Did you? Did you give that out on the pregame show? No, I didn't realize y'all had a pregame show. Okay, oh, yeah. Easy. Every Sunday, oh, yeah. nine a.m. Pacific. Turn those notifications on so you don't miss it. So you can come. In, so you can give it out pregame so that you can really tout yeah, people, it. People will believe you then. Who did you have in your uh, in your sixty-four to one anytime touchdown parlay? So I had Travis Kelsey, Mike Evans. <sighs> Uh, McCaffrey, oh. Saquon, and Tyreek. Oh, we would have. I would have done this with you. Now you've cost me money. It's, That's at least sixty four hundred. It's we'll chalky, just, but I love it. Take it. I yeah, take well, I mean, sometimes you got to take the chalk. Yeah, you got to take the chuck. All right, thanks, Easy. Oh, appreciate man. the call, man. Yeah, appreciate y'all. Cheers. Yeah, that was. Uh, I mean. Kramer, we didn't we didn't mention Saquon Barkley. Mm. Looks like he rolled his ankle, possibly lower ankle sprain, possibly higher. What's your what's your thoughts on Saquon? Uh, that it, again, I I haven't watched the tape yet, but I have a sneaky suspicion sixty four is going to be around the scene of the crime. <laughs> if that motherfucker when he blo- when he pushed the defender into uh, <laughs> Saquon, that was great. Uh, y- y- look, they drafted a running back in the fifth round this year. They had Brita. <clears throat> Uh, Barkley was important. Uh, even his game, his work in the pass game was critical there to get the job done. I uh, not good. I do. I would expect they're going to put some wide receiver shit back there. Like they'll get weird if he's out. I think. And for those playing fantasy, I would imagine they're not going to give Burita like the bulk of the carries. It would be Gray getting the bulk of the carries, or they just get fully weird. And whatever they figured out in this game, they'll just. All sorts of weird, like backward running back motion, and maybe Wendell Robinson lines up in the back. It's gonna get fun, Sean. Oh, Especially, it the, will be fun you, on you, Thursday. You you realize the the gimmicky plays we're gonna see on Thursday night. This is gonna be an all time. Rams twenty three, San Francisco thirty. Rams cover, beautiful cover. Never in doubt. Uh, catch that plus seven and a half. That was an amazing cover. Shout out to you, Sean McVay. Definitely a real man. A DGen moment. Four seconds left. Trotting out the field goal team to cut it to seven, loved it. First off, I, I thought Stafford, for the most part, played his ass off. Was throwing the ball all over the place. Was really picking him apart. To me, the game changed when uh, he had a nice throw to Kyron Williams. It went right through his hands, uh, and the the 49ers intercepted it. After that, it was kind of game over. He also threw a, a classic, just Stafford pick late. Puka Nakua has been like the story of fantasy again. Shout Ooh. out to Andrew Robb who kept touting Puka Nakua, and I was I probably wrote it off. I'm like, ah, oh, he's just one of these deep rookies. He's had 25 catches, 266 yards in his first two games. I I thought that overall the Rams played a pretty decent game. 49ers are just they uh, as much as it pains me to say it, they're playing really well right now. Ah. Oh. I mean, what's the, how do we not investigate this? Like, I understand the math of kicking the field goal so you can do the onside kick and then go for the win, but you don't have like the zero was on the clock when the play ended. Well, I think they were, they were hoping to kick a quick field goal. They should have kicked it the play before. I know. I just said, I wouldn't complain about any rules, (laughs) but if someone kicks a, a field, I would go as far to say if the clock runs out on a field goal that cuts the game to any score that is less than or greater than zero, it it shouldn't count. Uh, that's a stupid rule. That's why is that? What's the point of kicking this field goal? So they could cover the spread. Well, so they obviously. could have three more points. It, th- there are deep tiebreakers. Probably will never come into play, but there are wow, deep tiebreakers. You're prepared. Look at this. I, I Dude, like there this are deep tiebreakers. Like there are tiebreakers that include point differential. It's an all time bad beat. And and oh, it's no, a, Rams should have Rams had a chance to win that game outright. All they were time always, bad beat. They were always gonna get all a backdoor time score. bad beat. <laughs> you are 
You are making w- a ton of excuses I for an not, accountability. Oh man. shit! I wouldn't be saying this if there was twenty seconds left. <laughs> there was no time to do the onside kick. The fuck are you doing? A horrible take. Dallas Cowboys thirty, uh, Jets ten. This was never much of a game. Jets are just uh, everyone was right. Jets look like shit with just Zach Wilson. Dalvin Cook should not be getting any touches. Uh, that's no, that's my one. Out. My one uh, interesting takeaway, Ryan. It seems like you took a call here. Yeah, Who well, do we got I, on the I, line? It's, we're talking Cowboys. We, I figured I'd bring cereal. Oh, on. Okay, cereal. What's That's happening, man? <laughs> You're welcome, cereal. What's up, fellas, man? How's your Sunday going? Uh, just pretty, as good as good. yours. <laughs> yeah, pretty pretty <laughs> solid day today. You're right about that. Yeah, I kicked off things at the one o'clock slate, hitting a thirty to one. Ooh, <laughs> what was your thirty yeah. to one? All teams hit a field goal in the first <laughs> oh, uh, man. one o'clock games. That is a real D Gen bet. I saw people uh tweeting out some of those. That's crazy. Congrats. Well, and and, and Keith from uh Wichita, or he's been oh. he's been sliding into our DM DMs publicly and privately about this whole touchback gimmick. Yeah, he just keeps <laughs> tweeting at us. I think th- I think it is DraftKings promo code SGP that offers the kickoff to be a touchback and he's laying uh, minus 200 ish on all these bets and they're all hitting. Well, and he parlayed them all, all the yeah. early games today with 28 to one. <laughs> well, they even offered a special bet that was 28 to one. Basically every kickoff to, to the first kickoff I, I, to be a touchback. I love that. He's We're win- missing out. He's winning the sucker bet. This is beautiful. Now uh cereal. What was your, what was your uh, big takeaway uh, for the week or what was your, so you hit that 30 to one. That's pretty awesome. Anything, uh, any bad beats? What pissed you off? No, no bad beats. I mean, I covered everything with the Dallas game. Got Jake Ferguson oh. first touchdown. Really? Uh, Osa Adigazua uh, sack for 420. Of course, that was going to hit. That was never in doubt. <laughs> yes. Yep. Diggs interception. Gave that out earlier. Everything was perfect. This first is... half team total. Covered the spread. That Didn't is a disgusting act. So, Serial, your connections, uh, it's cutting out, man. <laughs> <laughs> man, this is I, we can't. So, do, do you guys? Do you? Is like week three is when the when they start working on the parade route. Have you have you got your tickets to <laughs> Vegas yet for the big game? Uh, no, but we'll be going to San Fran <laughs> to try to try to win that one first. Oh, okay. All right. Well, worst of luck with the rest of the season, but good luck with your bets. Unless it's uh, unless it's Eagles. Well, and, and they, Appreciate they have, it, they have the Cardinals next week. So oh. we'll really see how good they Schedule are. Scheduled oh, bye week. On. Real uh, you Jets and take Cardinals. The Cardinals next week. <laughs> Cardinals are going to be catching oh, a lot of me. points. Listen to me. Listen to me. That team, no one believes in them. Josh Dobbs, the astronaut. You can't, you can't uh, get. As someone said to me today, you can't lose to a guy without eyebrows. <laughs> I didn't say it. Someone said it to me. <laughs> All right, Sierra. Appreciate the call. Denver Broncos thirty-three, Washington Commanders thirty-five. Denver, of course, was up twenty-one to three, and then you just you could feel it in the studio that they, as soon as Russell Wilson had his first fumble, you just go, "Oh, they're this is the the fucking game is going to unravel," and it did. The, the 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 Commanders' defense played pretty well there in the second half. The Broncos' defense. Just completely laid down. I, Sean Payton does always start slow, but man, I thought they, it, I love them at home elevation. They got that fast start and then, and then uh commanders oh, came two back. in the elevation early in the season. Not I, I still like that elevation. angle. Still like that angle. The last time the Washington commanders started two and O or then Redskins Rex Grossman was their starting quarterback. Mm. The year was 2011. Sexy Rex. That 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 Hail Mary was just such the entire game was such a tease because they were so up and then you just you could feel that they were gonna blow this thing. And then to get the Hail Mary and then not get the two point. And clearly he was being held. It was just it was just a wild ride. Maybe this is the end of Russ. He he looked so good in the scripted portion oh. of Sean Payton's game. Jared Stidham, Ryan. How many games till we see Jared Stidham? Because I feel like we're getting close already. Uh, is it Stidham? Is it the quarterback? Is the is it the line? Because there was stuff there. They were making big plays. We were even joking that it was like when you see that hot chick from high school or whatever. 
and and we were get, getting those feelings about Russ again. He's slinging it down the sideline <laughs> to Marvin those, Mims. Yeah, Marvin Mims. He had like two catches for 144 yards. What what happened to Marvin the Mims? The defense was getting like wor- this isn't that was not an elite defense. We didn't really note it. This was on us, but but I mean, come on, the the the, the Eric Bieniemy knew the defense. We, we missed that, and could could we be talking in a year about? Patrick Mahomes' brain leaving Kansas City with Eric Bieniemy and entering Sam Howell because he looked, he looked aware of what he was supposed to do most of the time. I would like, I see he had some bad moments last week, Sam Howell, like early in the game. I think this week he he looked pretty, maybe a couple moments early, but whenever the adjustments happened. He he was good for the rest. Yeah, of the he game. Made, he made some good throws in the second half. I, they also I, ran the shit out of the ball. I, I'm know. skeptical long term, buddy. Oh. It, off to a good start. Okay. Miami Dolphins 24, Dol- or uh, Patriots 17. It's a baby fucking wheel, oh. man. I do have a comp. We have a companion for this game too. Okay. What is, what is the companion? Uh, his rhyme. His name rhymes with Austin Apper. <laughs> It's a baby fucking wheel, man. Joining us on the line from the Golf Gambling Podcast, Mr. Boston Capper. Hey, Capper, congrats. I'm sure you were betting on the Dolphins. Oh, there's no way Capper knows how to work this kind of technology. <laughs> oh, I absolutely do, oh. sir. And, uh, and I did bet on the Dolphins. And I agree with my Dago Guinea greaseball <laughs> brother that that was a t- horrible fucking beast. Yeah. Uh, Sean's out. Unbelievable. Control. Kicking the fucking field goal with three seconds left. That needs to be investigated, and uh, all these little uh, millennial pussies should be able to get their money back. Right. Oh wow! Are you calling Boy. for a reef? Boy. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> so Capper, uh, Pat's off to zero and two start. Yeah. Uh, what what are you at zero and two ATS? Yeah. yeah correct. Were yep. you? Were cash, you? Cash two weeks in a row. Cash were, two weeks in a row. So now do you, you bet on the you bet on the opposing team, but then like, are you still rooting? When that yeah. when that when that yeah, lineman yeah. Yep. sixty nine yep. caught the pitch and then almost got the first down and then I'm sure Patriots fans were all all upset saying oh you yeah, got past the line it, it was past the line and it's the <laughs> Irish Catholic thing Johnny you should know it it's just self flagellation man like I, I I bet against uh, I bet against my team and uh, you know one way or another I'm gonna be happy or sad. That's just how it works, and uh, because I'm, I was just so down on it, but like it, it's so frustrating because you can see signs of it being like a functioning team. Yeah, but Jesus fucking Christ, we have no talent. Not, well, well, no talent. And even even Mac himself, I think, must be a pretty frustrating watch because he had a couple like really nice throws, a touchdown uh, pass. Even though there was a legal man downfield, I'm sure they'll forget that part. But uh, he rolled out. <laughs> Hit Hunter Henry. It was like really nice throw, and then yeah. he has some just like really bad interceptions. It probably well, hangs in the pocket a little bad, too long. It was a bad decision to throw to Devontae Parker in the first place because he fucking yeah. sucks, and the fact that he was boxed out on the sideline. Yes, bad decision. But it's it's not even on. Mac looked good tonight. Mac is not the problem. Yeah. It's the offensive line is trash. There's no fucking talent on the outside, and Bill O'Brien. For whatever reason, listen, I love Billy O'Brien. He's a Dorchester kid. Like <laughs> I, 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 but. He his game plan is trash. Like it was, it's so bad. And I get he has to deal with the talent that Bill puts out there. It's very frustrating. Like we could be two and zero, oh, and we're zero and two, which is fine for my fucking alternative under five and a half bet. Fine with that, <laughs> but very frustrating as a fucking Pats fan. I like how I mean Bill O'Brien does have a lumpy New England head. <laughs> a good good call. All right, so are, you're not looking at the Patriots to win the division at twelve to one at all. Not even peeking the eye because we know I, I called it out on the handicap, Sean. The uh, offensive, the offensive line does have four guys hurt. Yeah, yeah, it's fucking awful. Uh, twelve to one. No, twelve no, to one. I'm not. No, no, <laughs> not with that. There's a two and zero. Oh, so what? We go to the Jets next week. So we get one and two. Uh, the Jets are now fucking one and two. Buffalo. Who's Buffalo got this week? You're. I mean, right now you're you're two and zero. Oh, uh, you're actually two and a half games back. Buffalo's at the, the Commanders next. Oh, that's a tough. Game. All right, so that's a win. So yeah, yeah, no, 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 twelve and one. Let, let let it go a couple more weeks, and, and we'll see oh, what happens. See okay. If Josh Allen's close eyes fuck him up later on. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> well, uh, the K metric has been reevaluated, not changing a thing. Yeah, dude, I've been telling this to everybody. Fucking, dude, you're 100 percent right with the fucking day ball thing and the eyeball <laughs> close thing. It's it's insane. Like, it, it, listen, you you sound like me, half a half a gin bottle deep, you know, tonight with it, the MGs you've ingested. But look, man, 
th- those Woo, are right. It's, smoking my weed. it's not just too close. It's also too far. Uh, maybe I'll reference Justin Fields for that one. Yeah, I feel like the too close is worse than the too far. Oh, Does yeah, that make definitely. sense? That's like, fair. So, like, like fish at least have the outside eyeballs where they can see <laughs> stuff coming. The inside ones can't see shit. So you're saying Justin Fields is a fish? Yeah, Justin Fields is definitely a fish. <laughs> <laughs> He's gay. He got filleted. All right, Capper. Before you go, what's your favorite bet for Monday night? Uh, I, I honestly, dude, I'm just, I'm just so tilted off tonight. I don't even have one right now. I like Sorry. that. That's <laughs> all right. There you hey, go. Sleep it off. So sleep angry. It off. All right. <laughs> Subscribe to the golf gambling podcast. Later boys. Kramer. We got some, uh, we got some props. We got our parlay yeah. coming up. I was firing up hall of fame bets. I, this tool is really awesome. I, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're advertisers on the show, but I, I'm glad they found us because I'm using this thing all the time when I'm putting together these over unders, when I'm doing uh, the DJ and parlays, they have a parlay optimizer. It, it really does all the heavy lifting because you, you just take any player you want. Even they have a uh, defensive player stuff. I put in Minka Fitzpatrick and then you just set the slider, how many tackles and then how, what game set you want to count it. They give you a percentage. They come up with the implied probability. It's also really easy to use. You, you watch the YouTube video; it takes two seconds. Uh, highly recommend Hall of Fame Bets. This thing it saves you a shit ton of time because I used to just manually look all these up on Football Reference, and it, it's way easier. You hit the deep stats button; you can see all the uh, all the trends. And you just okay. You want to do anytime touchdown? Here's their hits and misses for anytime touchdown. Oh man, this thing is awesome. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com. Use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month today. Start researching, start winning with Hall of Fame Bets. And of course, we're going to play higher or lower. Some people call it um, over under. We call it higher or lower because of underdog pick them, or you can just go higher or lower on your favorite fantasy uh, stats here. Use the promo code SGPN. Get a hundred percent deposit bonus up to one hundred dollars. Hopefully, you play the uh, two a higher lower. I gave out lower that cashed, but again, it didn't matter if you got it correct or wrong as long as you played the two a leg in uh, one of your uh, in one of your uh, higher lowers. You you got a chance to win a uh, hundred grand. Uh, they're giving away ten grand to ten lucky people. So check your underdog account. Maybe you are a winner. Underdogfantasy.com promo code SGPN. Kramer, I'll start off here. Give me, I know we're on the Steelers, but give me uh Nick Chubb higher 82 and a half rushing yards, six and two uh, to this number. The last eight games, no cam Hayward. I'm a little worried about Jerome Ford uh, did have 15 carries that first game, but I just, the offense runs through Nick Chubb. I the, the Christian McCaffrey carves them up. Also, I I think there's a world where he goes over and they they still lose the game, but if they win, I don't see how he doesn't get over uh, 82 and a half. So yeah, give me give me 82 and a or give me higher Nick Chubb 82 and a half rush yards. And uh, another fun way to play that, Sean. Yeah, you're uh, if you're shopping around. I was going. I was looking also at attempts, but 125. If you want to like play a crazy ladder, 125 yards rushing is 475. So hmm. that uh, I I think if you're playing that angle, you obviously like it to go all the way up. Yeah, if you're putting together a same game parlay mm-hmm. and you like the Browns, I I think you also toss in some alt Nick Chubb stuff because I I just don't see if they get the win and they get it done, I just don't see how they do it without him being a huge part of the game. Yeah, I was surprised to see the the Jerome Ford usage when I, when I was doing the first touchdown work. It, it was a little surprising. Yeah, I mean that's. Obviously, the game script they were way up, and and Chubb didn't need to be out. Doug there, in the but. YouTube chat saying they only ran four to acclimate him since he missed most of the preseason. That could be true too, because they they well, did get up big. I, up I didn't big. see when they when they gave him the carries, but that makes sense. He was worked in early, but it was mostly late. Yeah. All right, my first. I'll stay in the game. I'll stay in the same category. Ooh. But give me Deshaun Watson. He went uh, five carries for forty five yards in, in the game against the the Steelers, where. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm not in the touching ga- Deshaun Watson in the game against the uh, Bengals. Excuse me, where he was sacked three times, so he was also evading. And I, his number, Sean, <laughs> I'm going higher than 26 and a half rushing yards. I don't understand this 
he'll receive uh, the same type, if not more pressure in this one, J, uh, TJ Watt, obviously coming off the edge, look good in game one. So the idea that he's going to have to scramble because he's still, he's still not a good passer of the football. I, yeah, this, just, this number strikes me as they're not watching the games. So I'll, I'll make sure to call that out. If you're listening uh, on the props that are really easy because they're obviously <laughs> not watching the game. Watson goes higher than 26 and a half rushing well, yards. Yeah. Stay tuned. I, I, I got some uh, Watson angles as well. Nick in the YouTube chat saying uh, Jimmy Graham over one and a half grams of Molly pregame. We still haven't gotten an answer to what, uh, oh. what was going on with Jimmy, G, uh, Jimmy Graham there. We, ha- I have a list of un- unsolved mysteries Maybe. of the NFL. <laughs> We'll have we to turn just this have into a show. Segment. Stetson Bennett, what he's dealing with is bigger than football. We're yes, not going to talk about it. Uh, he's on the list. Uh, Jimmy Graham. The thing is, when you say that, it makes me want to know way more. If they just didn't address it, if they just said, "Hey, it's a personal thing," I'd be I'd be inclined not yeah. to care. But the fact that you went out and said, "I'm not going to even talk about it," it's like, oh, okay, now I got to know what it is. Yeah, and honestly, people reach out to our in our DMs all the time to to, to tell us. Uh, like when Sean Payton is is ripping uh, the bong, but yet yeah, maybe <laughs> this I do weed. I do want to know what Stetson Bennett digs. It's obviously very bad. Jalen Warren lower seven oh. rush attempts. Interesting. I test it feels like he's been getting involved a bunch, but he he really hasn't. He's uh three and seven to the uh, under here the last ten games. So yeah, I'm I'm. What going was he last game? That's a great question. I had it up, but I'll, I'll pull it up. Cause I, I, yeah, my, my concern for you would just be that it seems like they, they like something happened this off season. Maybe it's the whole running back conference call. And Najee is like, you got to keep me fresher. If you're going to do this to me and Warren I, three carries, Okay, see, it Mostly seemed catches, like he right? was. Yeah. I think in my head, I had the same thing before I started digging in uh, using the hall of fame bets. That I was like, he was involved a lot. He had five catches on twelve for only twelve yards. So I think they are going to be using him, but in the passing game, the short passing game. So I'm I'm going going lower here, seven rush attempts. So this next one, I am popping over to a New Orleans player, Jamal Williams, who by the way was incredibly inefficient in the first game, eighteen for forty five, two and a half yards of carry, still had eighteen carries. This number has gone up since I put it in, and now we talk about it. Maybe ninety minutes later, Jamal Williams higher than fifty-five and a half rushing yards. What I locked in to, to my play uh, currently fifty-seven and a half rushing yards. We'll still play it. I think just kind of diving in a little bit deeper on uh, the rest of the backfield. He dominated the snaps in week one. I don't think Kendry Miller is going to be all that healthy, and I don't think the Saints are in a rush to get him back. I think we could see another big carry game for this for Jamal Williams. And you saw what, I mean, just look what the Falcons were able to do against Carolina. And so you should expect a little bit more efficiency. I think Bijan and Algier ran for like six yards of carry. So let's, let's meet in the middle and say he can get to four and a half yards of carry gets those same 18 carries. He goes way over this number. So uh, higher than 55, so I'll, I'll even go current number higher. And 57 and a half rushing yards for Jamal Williams. And I do like the man in the box, CJ Sullivan's angle that Jamal Williams is the touchdown ladder this for this game. Okay. Uh, don't hate it. He's obviously the goal line back. Well, uh, yeah, they just don't have a lot of guys. I, I would still say Taysom Hill, Ryan, might be might be the goal <laughs> line back. When is he not? Uh Hayden Hurst higher uh five receptions. Ooh. Maybe this is maybe I'm chasing a little uh, recency <laughs> bias, but they don't really have a lot going on in the passing game. You have a rookie inexperienced quarterback who found a veteran tight end that he really trusts uh, seven targets, five catches last week. I think he's going to be involved. I just don't think they have a lot of like pass catchers that they can rely on. So yeah, give me a, uh, uh, give me Hayden Hurst. Oh, sorry. It was a uh, three. It was three receptions. I don't know why I wrote down five. He had five last week. So yeah, three is obviously way better. I was gonna say that was uh, that's that's a big number. Yeah, that's like a and, and he two of those uh, targets by the way came in the red zone. So stay tuned to late to the the touchdown portion later in the show. But he's certainly interesting as the field compresses. I'll stay I'll stay on the Panthers. I'll give you a different guy. Maybe one of the guys who changes uh, the distribution of the ball. All off season we heard that there was a ton of chemistry being built with 
Bryce Young and DJ Chark. Specifically in the deep stuff, DJ Chark, we've seen him before. He did this for Nick Foles in Jacksonville, like for small spurts. Maybe he gets hurt, but his number is 27 and a half. So give me higher than 27 and a half receiving yards. I do think this possibly happens in a single play. He's it's going to be a play action something. We're going to see DJ Chark. We're going to remember his speed and how he is able to separate. So I think he's coming in under the radar because he has been hurt. He got in a full practice on Saturday, so he's good to go. DJ Chark higher twenty seven and a half receiving yards. I'm going to defense here. Give me Minka Fitzpatrick higher six tackles solo and assisted. Last time they played Cleveland, he had ten. This is also a get up uh, spot. He's a very uh, emotional, energetic guy. And I think if Nick Chubb gets to the second level, it's going to be Minka Fitzpatrick coming up and then making energetic. the tackle. <laughs> he seems like a big, uh, high energy guy oh, yeah. who's going to get up for this game. Deshaun Watson scrambling. I like your angle there. I think Minka Fitzpatrick is a guy that can track him down. He's the spy, helping helping out. Yeah. So I I I, I think, think they, this is a pretty good uh pretty good price here. So give me a higher six tackles. He's, yeah, it's like uh, solo and assists combined. I mean, I specifically like that because I do think that the Deshaun Watson stuff, plus the fact that they they should have success running the ball, I would think. Yeah. All right. I give it three. How many? Oh, I I thought we were doing five. Oh, well, we've never done five before, but we can do five. Oh, okay. Yeah, goldfish brain. I mean, maybe for the prop show we do five. Yeah. Not for the money. All right. So if I was adding legs here. The one that I'm came just giving. I'm uh, sorry. No, no, I that's, just, that's I like fine. I typically, typically, we, yeah, we, you know, format. Uh, no, if well, I, there's two Monday and, night games. I didn't want to limit just three props. You're unbelievable, Chris so, Bos. I'll give out Chris Boswell. Oh, what kicker props? Yep. You're gonna, you're gonna stretch me out to five and then give out a kicker prop. People Chris are gonna Boswell, be very angry. Over one and a half extra points. Their team total is seventeen and a half. Okay. So they're already telling you. They expect him to be right around that 17 number. He's he's hit one and a half more than one and a half extra points 54% of the time since 2022. I think I think they I think they get three touchdowns. So yeah, give me uh, over one and a half extra points for Chris Boswell. All right. So the the next angle I would take and I didn't I wanted to avoid, you know, and I'll just do Der, uh, Derek Carr has been an interception machine. Let's go higher a half interception for Derek Carr. Uh, I believe he's on an incredible streak of six or seven straight games with an interception. Uh, he threw one today. I think even with the reliance on the run game, uh, Carolina is going to get an opportunity or two to pick him off. I think what I mean, in the fumble didn't even count if you remember that turnover. So yeah. he's uh, he's he's been yeah all right dating back to his time with the Raiders. It's six straight games with an interception. So let's go higher. I mean, this is an implied minus one ten. It's actually implied plus one hundred, but yeah, I mean, over or higher than a half interception. Let's go. You want to move over to the first touchdown market? Craig? No, I, I, did you give out five? Oh yeah, I gave out five. I didn't want to. I, if you don't, who was have, your fifth? That was my fifth. Oh, how did how did you manage to give out five? And I, I started. I was, all right, but that still would have been four. No, it's five. Okay, what was your what was your fifth? My fifth. read off your props. I don't believe you. <laughs> I don't believe you. I we went one Nick one Chubb, one. Nick Chubb higher eighty two and a half okay. rushing yards. Jalen Warren lower seven rush attempts. Hayden Hurst higher three receptions. Yeah. Minka Fitzpatrick higher six tackles. Chris Boswell he, higher one and a half. Extra you must points. have jumped in there and done two. That's that's the only way. That's the only way this is explained. No, I started. You've given out four. Now give out your fifth. All right, my well, my fifth, which again, absolute freestyle right now. <laughs> I, oh no, I, I think uh, standout thing from the first game to me from the Browns was, can you name the receiver who led the team in snaps? Uh, Donovan Peoples Jones. Donovan Peoples Jones. Let's go over thirty three and higher than thirty three and a half receiving yards because. Again, he's he's the deep threat. A little bit of the same angle as DJ Chark. If he gets it, it could be a catch or two. And again, he he led the team in snaps. And sometimes that's more about your ability to run block than the, than the amount of uh, downfield targets you're going to get. But in a matchup where Cooper now banged up, late add to the injury report, 
Elijah Moore going to be relied on a lot more. I, I think it comes down to Donovan Peoples Jones or Njoku in terms of getting getting cute and taking one of the alternative guys. Give me higher than thirty three and a half receiving yards for DPJ. Nice. Ah, uh, you know, D, I I like the idea of all the D's. Got four D's and one J. Deshaun Watson, DJ Chark, Derek Carr, Donovan Peoples Jones, Jamal Williams. <laughs> All right, Saints at Panthers, first touchdown. All right, here we go. For me, I'll take Hayden Hurst, fourteen to one. Clearly, he's he's the guy. They they didn't score a uh, touchdown in the first game, but uh, he got some uh, red zone opportunities. The other one, I'm going to go with um, Lavisca Chenault, who also had some uh, red zone targets. He's thirty five to one. To me, Carolina is still very much just wide open as far as who is going to be the pass catcher there. I like rolling the dice there. Uh, Lavisca thirty-five to one. Hayden Hurst fourteen to one on the Saints side. You can't have a Saints primetime game without having Taysom Hill in your first touchdown, sixteen to one. Now this is a true DGen only first touchdown. This is a guy who did have a red zone target in the Saints' first game. He. Uh, also played for the Panthers in 2021 and 2020. Keith Kirkwood, 65 to one for the Saints. I still think the Saints are kind of wide open, so I'll, I'll take uh, I'll roll the dice on Keith Kirkwood. Kramer, what do you got for I, his touchdown? I don't hate. I, I mean, I I noticed Kirkwood on the targets list, and I was yes. like, oh, that that feels cute. Uh, maybe this is his only target he receives in the red zone all season. Uh, all right, so I I said. For the Saints, especially, Chris Olave is clearly going to be a target hog. So I, I him at ten to one felt off, and then I went longer to to balance it out. You know we like the backup tight ends. Everyone's going to talk about Jimmy Graham. People love Juwan Johnson before the year. You love Taysom Hill, who yep. dabbles with quarterback and tight end. No one's talking about Foster Moreau. He's interesting. He's forty to one. What was his snap count, or how, how much did he get any looks? Uh, game one, he didn't get any red zone looks. But the more important thing is, you look at the tight end snap count. He was on the field for forty nine percent, and the only guy he was behind was Juwan Johnson. So not Jimmy Graham, not Taysom Hill. It was Foster Moreau who was out there for the two. I still tight don't understand why they signed Jimmy Graham. That, it's almost <laughs> like, like really he's got some it. dirt on something. <laughs> So he, something's happened, and, he, and and yeah, he's got he's got some dirt on someone. You know, you know, he knows where the wire taps so are hidden. Foster Moreau is also forty to one, which that struck me as a nice backup tight end price in today's market. Eggs are so expensive. All right, so DJ Chark on the Panther side again. I think he's the deep threat. I think he is absolutely the guy that if if there is some weird play action, nice Bryce Young pass, I think it goes to DJ Chark. And I mentioned it earlier. You gave out a Hayden Hurst prop. I think his price being he should be the favorite of the pass catchers uh, to be the first touchdown catcher for the Panthers. Fourteen to one. A little chalkier here, but I I I, I mean the the price uh, again the prices that they've they've ruined this market in some ways. I mean look the amount of guys that are under twenty to one. What are we doing? We used to be able to just swim in twenty five <laughs> to one. Uh, they really so have, real they, quick before we move on, Bryce Young, twenty-two to one. Did you at all peek at that and say, "Hmm, is he is he potentially does he potentially fit the model?" Uh, he's so small. Yeah, he's, he's so, so small. tiny. I, I couldn't pull the trigger. I, he might he might snap in half if they yeah. if they use him on a uh, couldn't pull the trigger <laughs> on a QB snake. All right, how about for the nightcap? For the nightcap, here we go. I have to pivot because I just saw Anthony McFarland. Has been uh, ruled out, so he was he was going to be one of my guys. Thirty. Right, I'll, I'll I'll start for you. Okay. Uh, first, another backup tight end, Darnell Washington, twenty-five to one. Yeah, I'll co-sign that because yeah, he was going to be my other guy. I was gonna could be. end up being or. Hear me out, Ryan. Or is it Connor Hayward? Connor Hayward actually had a red zone catch. I'm going to go Connor Hayward, twenty-five to one. I think the right answer is probably it's Fryermuth, and we're getting a little cute here. But I'll I'll stick with Darnell Washington, and I I have to but go. Fryer moves only twelve to one. It doesn't matter. Yeah, he's a he, I, they love. I don't think Pickens should be shorter odds than Fryermuth. Yeah, I I think it, it Fryermuth's a much b- bigger red zone target. Uh, I had to go Steelers defense. I had to go Steelers defense. Ooh. If you go back and watch the tape of Deshaun Watson, he made a lot of bad decisions. They didn't all turn into turnovers or even bad plays. 
but he made a lot of bad reads in that game. And the interception, he rolls out, no one's around him, and he throws it to a defender who's not near anyone on his team. And so I think, and he's still holding the ball like it's a loaf of bread. And what is looking, uh, what does DraftKings have the price at? Uh, the price on the defense is thirty. They've been pretty standard at thirty-five to one for defense special teams. And again, after the controversy from the Cowboys Week One, you definitely want to make sure your book doesn't try to screw you with only saying yeah, defense. You should get the special teams in there, or the price should be much much steeper. So yeah, thirty-five to one for the Steelers D. Then I flipped over to the Browns, and I this is where I said I I have to. How do you find a way to get leverage off of again? N- all of these guys are heavy favorites. So I said, you know what? Let's go, let's go double tight end. We don't know which one of the backup tight ends will be out there, but one of them will be out there on the field. They both were out there at times. Harrison Bryant, Love 55 Harrison to Bryant. one. Jordan Aikens, 50 to one. Both have had been out, both have been on the field. So it comes down to what it looks like in the red zone. I yeah, think Harrison Bryant had a red zone touchdown last week. Aikens is more, yeah, and he's still fifty-five to one. Aikens is more of like the Injoku replacement, I think. But again, they're both getting snaps. So at fifty and fifty-five to one, I had to take a stab here. Also, the Steelers have struggled to to defend the tight end at times. And if Minka Fitzpatrick is being uh, wrapped up with some like quarterback spy activities, I, I, maybe a, maybe a vulnerable spot of their defense. Harrison Bryant, I love uh, first touchdown, fifty-five to one. I also think he's a fun anytime touchdown. I I like, uh, and I also mentioned Connor Hayward for the Steelers, twenty-five to one. I'm also going to do uh, the quarterback for both games here. Kenny really? Pickett at twenty to one, Deshaun Watson at nineteen to one. They're both guys who yeah, run long. around uh, enough to me that qualify. And getting up to nineteen, twenty to one, I, I think is a uh, really good price. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't. I thought about both guys and they kind of fit the model with Watson more than, than Pickett, But I, you know, I, I thought we had made a determination as a show that we weren't going to touch Deshaun Watson. <laughs> oh, I'm going to touch him. All right. In the, uh, in the, in the first touchdown touch target, him scoring I'm not touching Deshaun Watson, you're going to be rooting for Deshaun Watson to score on public on, on national television. Yep. Repeatedly, nineteen to one. No, just once. But we're are, aren't we on the Steelers, Sean? Uh, yeah. Oh my goodness. But I, I gave out first. I mean, right? <laughs> we gave out first better. touchdowns. <laughs> you just you just literally gave out two yeah. Cleveland Brown first touchdowns. I know. Okay. Uh, my DJ yeah. parlay. You're here. Hashtag Dejans only. You, you made it all this way. Harrison Bryant, anytime touchdown, like this uh, on its own as well, fifteen to one. Kenny Pickett. Touchdown Steelers money line. What's that pay? 190 to 1. Let's say, go, say baby. That, say oh that again. So, some of us are probably not writing it down. So, say it okay. one more time. And these are, uh, shout out to Ryan. If you sign up for our Patreon, sportsgamblingpackets.com slash Patreon, all the picks we give out are, will be included in the sheets, make it easier for you guys to track. Uh, and we're adding all the props as well. Yeah, so. prop sheet will be, it'll be a, like a Monday morning uh, gift in your in your basket. Harrison Bryant touchdown, Kenny Pickett touchdown, Steelers money line one ninety to one. That doesn't sound right. That I mean, what I, doesn't it sound sounds right like about you're cheating? How is that such a big hundred dollars wins you nineteen grand? You're welcome, America. I, I guess I have to buy a ticket. All right, I I much like last week. I, I instead of me having the or the the short the long odds and you having the short odds, I have the short odds this week. But this felt too easy. And it pays out twenty to one. Deshaun Watson to have fifty rushing yards. Okay. DJ Shark to have fifty receiving yards. Okay. That's it. What? Yeah. Twenty to one. Twenty to one. This just seems wrong. I, I'm gonna. I didn't calculate it. I'm gonna Draft drive Kings out did. to Arizona and get the DraftKings uh, sportsbook using the promo code SGP. I'm gonna get my bonus bets. I'm gonna rob these people blind. Let's go, baby. It it did. Uh, that's why I stopped. I was like, "What am I? This feels like a. I mean, twenty to one. That's like a what forty point dog. That is crazy. Yeah, that'd be that'd be a Smash! that'd be a hell of a win. <laughs> hey, we'll be back uh, tomorrow night after Monday night football, getting you ready for college football week four. Got a ton more stuff coming out. And and hey, support the Patreon. Appreciate everyone doing that. 
Uh, we just uh, gave out some Nike Air Jordan shoes. Going to announce the winner in the Patreon over there. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Patreon to do your war or do your part in the war against corporate gambling. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean Stacking the Money Green. He's Ryan. Dan Joan, ownership, not dead. Kramer. Let it ride.